Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of altorcradio.net. Mother Nature has the answer to all the things we need. It is in the purest waters which flow out to the sea. You will find it on the prairies, in the rich and fertile lands. And you will find abundance upon the desert sands. As we seek the magic potion that will help regain our youth, the chemistry of progress and its self-polluted truth had crept into Welcome everyone and it is indeed a pleasure to be back with you again on this wonderful Tuesday evening in Las Vegas. And tonight we have a really really interesting show. I'm pretty excited about the show because I think there's been a lot of talk today about, you know, as everyone's heard uh, some of the tragedies that have taken place in this uh, in this day. And so, to me, I'm pretty excited to be here to talk about it from a standpoint that I believe that we have two people with us today that can share some real live solutions and answers to some of the common things that people um, have in their life. And sometimes we're talking today a little bit about depression and sometimes how depression can be something that you're not even quite aware that is part of your reality. You get so used to living with it, you don't even see what's going on. So today we have Bobby, my main man here with us, and we're going to rock and roll today. And then we have our two superstar guests, uh, Sheila Mitchell. Mitchell, you got to be great. We must be related somehow along the line, but <laughs> hey, what the heck, right? And Michael Thrower. And so well, I want to get right into it. Today was kind of, it was an interesting day for me because I was really affected by the news of Robin Williams committing suicide. And, you know, earlier in my life, I would always say that, you know, I I couldn't understand why people committed suicide. I just didn't get it. And it would be like, why would you take a permanent solution to a temporary problem, right? Because usually most things are temporary. So why would you choose something permanent that you can't take back? And I have to tell you, I think as I aged, I had a different understanding of what happens with stress and a variety of things. And if you don't have the proper tools in your toolkit, or know where to go to get information to seek out, you know, or do something that we talked about earlier, like really start to educate. And when you think about just the fact of how addiction plays a role into all of this, because we look to fill this hole that we have within ourselves, and we either use drugs, food, sex, alcohol, something outside of ourselves to try to fill this hole. You know, because we're feeling the sadness, we're feeling the emptiness, and we're not connected to the, a power greater than ourselves. We're not connected to life. And uh, until we have that connection, until that hole is filled, you know, we'll always be searching and looking for something else. And, and finding those solutions and understanding where to go to get those solutions, because to me, you know, we all have a, a powerful gift that we bring into this world. We all have a purpose that we, we're here to serve. There's a reason that all of us are in this room together. And I may not know what the ultimate outcome of that is but i just show up like if i just show up something's going to happen so bobby i want to turn it over to you for a little bit so you can just tell a little bit maybe some of the some of the things you might have experienced today some of the things you might have and then possibly introduce uh sheila to the audience and and let's see what we can do for now sounds good yeah i i share your sentiment um and and i didn't really uh it it took a few hours for it to sink in uh, when I heard about uh, Robin Williams passing, and the thing that always um, saddens my heart when I hear of somebody taking their life um, is when someone gets to that point, they must have zero hope. hope. <clears throat> they must not even have a smidge of hope, you know. And that that's that's the sad thing. We had a um, event here uh, just a few weeks ago um, to try and heighten the awareness of our veterans yes absolutely Uh, 30 to 60 veterans take their life every Every single day day. absolutely and what a horrible feeling that must be to just feel like there's just no hope and there's no sense in going on and um 
uh, we, I feel really, really fortunate to have a couple of good friends with us today. Uh, Sheila Mitchell, I met uh, not really all that long ago, maybe just a month or so ago. She's the sister of a dear friend of mine, and she has a foundation that she's forming. And would you like to just tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. It's the Adam Mitchell Foundation for Research and Natural Cures. And uh, I, was ins I was inspired to create it because I watched as my son was battling cancer. I experienced that, um, in my personal experience, the things that work, that actually can detoxify the system and get you well, are not endorsed by insurance. The insurance doesn't allow you to deduct anything that's natural, whether it's aromatherapy or um, uh, hydrotherapy, oxygen therapy. There's, um, you know, I could go on and on. There's lots of things you can do naturally these days. Uh, I work with the Hippocrates Health Institute, and they have. It's not a merely a miracle, but they give you the tools mm -hmm. to heal yourself. Right. They empower you. And, but nothing is deductible. People are struggling. And um, so unfortunately my son died because of um, all of the um, things that don't work and that are not deductible from insurance. And so, you know, to honor his life and his legacy, I am starting the Adam Mitchell Foundation for Research and Natural Cures. And it's, it gets me up in the morning. It helps. It's my biggest coping skill. Right. Right. Well, we're glad you joined us. You're from St. Louis. Well, I'm actually from Tennessee, right. and then um, I've lived in St. Louis. I live there now. Uh -huh. But Las Vegas is my hometown. Okay. And my family and my sister lives here, and mm -hmm. I, the energy here is so m wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Well, we, we look forward to working with you. And uh, another dear friend, I, I've known Michael Thrower for quite a while, and we've reconnected recently. And Michael had me over uh, to do a uh, demonstration on, on hmm. what, what he specializes in, and he's offered to do the same for you, so you're in for... Well, I'm glad sure. you got it on tape, man. <laughs> See, now you can't back out. Because <laughs> uh, after the show, you might be like, man, I don't want to talk to that again. <laughs> and and I, th these are things that, to the average person, that they might scratch their head when you tell them what he does, right. but when you feel it firsthand... I called him, I think two days after I he did his demonstration, and I said, you know, I really, I didn't notice it right off the bat, but when after he worked with me with the lights and the oils and the tuning forks, and I just had a sense that I was more in the now. That's the only way I can explain it. It's kind of hard to capsulize. But, you know, when well, I called let me, you... Let me ask you this, yeah. Bobby, because I think it's pretty interesting. And, and something that Sheila said earlier about, you know, really the, the balance in the body in all the different terms. So, Mike, I want to just really... I mean, because Bobby had his experience. I think that was, was absolutely awesome. I mean, he, he couldn't wait. When he came in the office, he was like, Hey, man, I got to tell you. I was like, I already knew. I could look at him and see <laughs> that Michael was unique and that he really was unique and, and, and have a, bring an awful lot to the planet. And I know part of your journey is to heal. But one of the things I really wanted to know from you is how do we bring the body into balance? How, do, how does what you do bring the body into balance so we can kind of offset some of these things and emotional things that we may be experiencing? Well, I've been kind of blessed. Um, I almost died in uh, 2002, and my health was totally rock bottom, basically. So I had a choice of either standing up or and walking or laying down. And so I, I started on the path of transcendental meditation, wow. which led me to lights. Uh, that was my first modality. And I saw, I saw the power in the lights. I said, oh, this is just too powerful not to, do, not to, to, bring, to bring forth. And so after I started working with the lights, I got into aromatherapy. And then from aromatherapy, it's, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> I've just uh, I've been all over the world. Um, I, matter of fact, I've taught uh, color lights over in Australia. And the power of lights, what they can do to the body, what, how they can magnify and bring the body up or bring it down. It mm. depends on what you're, what's going on with you. Um, so that's kind of what it is. You, the, when I work with lights and I work with the bodies, the body talks to me. Okay. And then I just kind of go from there. 
Okay, so a person like myself, like I, I, I get it, I understand it, and even with our conversations today, it was awesome because you made some really simple analogies like what happens to a plant if there's no light, right? <laughs> and so I was like, oh man, that really makes sense. So tell us a little bit more about how this, you know, is there some science behind this? Is how do you how do these lights really impact and serve in a way that helps the body to balance? Well, all healing comes from light. The body mm -hmm. is light, sound, and vibration, and Everything, the first healing we ever had was, was brought about by the Egyptians, and the Greeks were really the first one to, to bring it forth. But there's been healing rooms all over the world forever. The people used to come into the uh, churches and go, I'm healed. And they're, no, you're sitting underneath an um, indigo blue stained glass window. And indigo blue is a pain reliever. It also reduces mm -hmm. your stress. They've been using blue light on jaundice babies for decades. Um, Red light, that's, that's the same thing as putting heat to the body. Blue light, that's the same thing as putting ice to the body. Green, that's just a natural, puts chlorophyll, oxygen into the body. It, it's a natural, um, just relaxer. Uh, gives you unconditional love. The more you can get in touch with yourself, the more mm. you can get in touch with other people. And this is how the lights work. They get you out of your way, right. and the lights go in there. There's a certain vibration, and they talk, and they tell the body, and the body says, thank you. Wow. Well, that's really interesting. Sheila, let me ask you, I mean, I know that you have been on your own mission to to really, you know, and, and this is what this is the thing that I think is really so important that most people really miss, because everything in life is, is really a lesson. It's really what we choose to do with something. Right. Absolutely. You know, we can we can choose to be a victim of something or we can choose to be an advocate of something. We can choose to take a stand and say, hey, you know what? I think of like mothers against drunk driving and just certain things that certain events happen and it rallied people. People said, no, no more, man. Like, you know, I've had enough of this and we're going to do something about it. So tell us a little bit more about your journey, because obviously you're on this path to educate and really b provide a solution to people. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, um, thank you. You're right. We have to stand up and um, time is now to take action and to make a better world. Um, my journey, as I reflect on it, I'm writing a book about energy medicine and my life and my son Adam's life. And as I reflect on it, you know, I started uh, studying yoga, yoga in uh, kindergarten here in Las Vegas when, many, many years ago <laughs> <laughs> and uh, had no clue and I, what it was doing except I loved it. And right. I came home and started teaching my family what I was learning. They weren't calling it yoga, but that I remember because it's many years ago. But over the years, I've learned uh, so much about energy medicine through, mm. you know, what you think you create. Yes. And uh, I've worked with um, Dr. Joel Elkies, uh, who is a pioneer in energy medicine, who told me personally that art therapy is profoundly more successful in healing. The worst patients, like the p patients who've had Agent Orange, for example, that everyone's, the doctor said, there's no hope for you. You might just go home and forget it. But art therapy actually had healed, had been a tool that they, they used to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. And Joel um, worked with the Institute of Noetic Sciences. I've worked with them quite a bit. Adam's father founded the Institute of Noetic Sciences. And so I had the wonderful opportunity of meeting people like Joel and Raymond Moody and um, just I, the list goes on and on. And so in my book, I'm going to be highlighting Dan Millman, who, who wrote mm -hmm. um, The Peaceful, Peaceful Warrior. Warrior. Yes. He's a friend. And um, so we're all working together to make a better world. And uh, it's wonderful what you all are doing here with this show. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thanks for being mm -hmm. here. And, you know, Dan Millman, uh, I'll never forget, I w actually was coached by him. And um, I went to his home and... Uh, and so he didn't do coaching in his house. He had like this little, like a little garage almost, right? I was like, man, where's this dude taking me to Peaceful Warrior, right? <laughs> Going into this little garage. And, and it was mo one of the most amazing experiences. And I think that's where coaching and having direction and really creating that level of space that can create change. And I've had, you know, many people tell me through the course of my life and different things that I experienced that, you know, maybe you should try medication for depression or this or that or whatever. And I just, it's not something, I, for me personally, for me personally, I don't, I haven't had any chemicals of any kind 
no no drugs, no alcohol, no G congestions, no antihistamines, nothing in my body for well over 33, 34 years. That's great. Right? So it's That's like great. so it's like I'm not going to start now at at this stage of my life. <clears throat> but Michael, let me ask you. So what would be an alternative for me? So like if there was things going on in my life and I'm like, man, I'm really stressed out, I don't know what to do. I'm feeling depressed, I'm down. What would I, what would you do? What would I, what would, if I came to you, I came knocking on your door, I'm like, okay, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> well, let me start off by uh, reciting an example. I, when I'm, I've had people come to me for clients for the vibrational raindrop and their eyes are sticking out like this, their hair <laughs> standing straight up. And I go, no, we're going to do something a little different. We do what I've created called a mind, the mind's eye method. And because what we want to do is relax the body, give the body what it needs. It gets the person out of the way and lets the oils and lets the lights and the forks go in and take care of them. So it, it kind of gets you to, to kind of look up here, looking down instead of looking eye to eye, which gives the body relaxation and the body takes over by creating homeostasis in the body. Okay. And relaxation, peace, sleep, and that's the key. Okay. Well, Bobby, since you had already experienced this feeling, what did you, what was kind of your experience? I mean, I know you told us a little bit about it, but expand on it just a, a tad bit more. Well, I, I was actually, um, I wouldn't call it a dream state, but it was super, super relaxed. And the vibration that I felt, I was assuming, I couldn't see, but I was assuming that was the forks probably that... What, what, if I felt that vibration on, on my foot, for example, was that one of the forks? No, it that, was one of the forks, okay. yes. Okay, and, and I kept, and then the oil, the, the aromas from the oils were all mixing in, and I had my eyes closed, but I could, I could see, the, mm. see the lights. I wasn't okay. too aware of color, though, and that's one of the questions that I, I did want to find out was, when it comes to the different colors, do you blend them? Like, do depending on what's needed, do you use a combination of, say, blue and green, or is, is it all very separate? It's uh, It really depends. Uh, when I start working on the body, the, the body kind of talks to me. Mm. But uh, there's different <laughs> colors. Like I said, when on the color light facial, that's a holographic image of the whole body. So when I'm working on that, I'm working on your excretory, your circuitory, your kidney, your spleen. I'm actually going over and having the right side of the brain come over with the left side and shake hands. So they just they have a kind of a, okay, we're going to get along today. <laughs> and then the colors, the, so the lights have certain vibrations, are not, they're raised in, in vibration or nanometers. Uh, so I just, let's just talk about vibration. So if, say, the kidneys, you're having a problem with the kidney area, when you're using red on the circuitory part, that red vibration is going to go in there to that vibration part of the organ they're like mm -hmm. little messengers and they're calling their name and that's where those light that's where the colors go to because we are human photo cells every cell in our body has a photo cell in it mm. and they say if if we're really feeling good about ourselves and about everything that we can be seen 16 kilometers away wow and we always say we don't have any energy so that it, we are total energy that's all we are is energy and light sound and vibration when you start putting these together that's all that's the only way we can heal the body now could you explain in layman's terms sure. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> how the light works with the vibration from the forks which works in conjunction with the oils is it is it is there a way to explain that for someone like myself that isn't schooled in it that 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 I would understand it? Well, let's just put it this way: the oils have a certain vibration, the lights have a certain vibrations, and the forks have a certain vibration, and our body has a certain vibration. Mm. So what we're doing is when we're putting these together, we're sending the vibration to that part of the body that there has a light imbalance. So when we're having blockages and say we're having trouble breathing, we're, we're probably having an energy flow that we need to get that blockage right there. It's not mm -hmm. coming through. So a lot of times I'll go in with just pink on the spleen because pink is unconditional love, mm. but it's also a very invigorating color. Pink is the most fabulous color. Thank you, God. <laughs> that's what pink is. I mean, that's, I love pink. I always end all of my protocols with pink and magenta. They're very beautiful. They just help you bring you back into your body, bring you back into yourself, and just let yourself go into that 
face. And the body goes, thank you. That's, that's, that's really how I have to describe it. The body says, thank you, because we're so busy fighting our body mm -hmm. and fighting everything in it. When we yes. give them these beautiful things we're blessed with, I mean, God gave us the oils before we were even put on earth. Mm -hmm. God gave us light before we were even put on earth. So think about that. Makes sense. Uh, is it like uh, the, you know, fine tuning of an orchestra before they're going to perform? It's like the body is this orchestra and all the pieces. I like, like to think of it as a beautiful ice carving. You're starting off and you can't really tell and you're kind of whipping around, <laughs> doing some <laughs> things, putting the forks, you're starting to match the body up and it's starting to come back in the face. And as you keep going and you start doing the work and the body just settles down and give and all that those, the vibrations go into the body and it's making all these changes and then it just goes, it's like a flower opening up. It's like a beautiful masterpiece. That's wow. how I like to describe it. I have a little dog that has a tumor on her foot and the vet said that if he went in and looked at it with like a surgery that he'd probably have to take off the foot but after so many years of learning about healing and consciousness and what's possible mm -hmm. miracles do you work on animals i do um do you? It, i work more most on humans but yes i do work on animals but if i on just in the case of what you're talking about i'm not a doctor i don't prescribe right um, I but i would be putting frankincense on that foot right and i would be putting green because cancer cannot live in anything it's a healthy body and mm -hmm. green is chlorophyll and it's a, it's a natural ingredient that it's just brings the body into the healing phase so once that gets in the face cancer has nowhere to go but just to run away. Wonderful. Do you do remote healing at all? I've done it, but I'm not an expert. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at it. Um, I, pr I could do it. I'm, I'm getting ready to create some pretty amazing protocols right now. That's what I'm going into a whole section of putting some, kind of doing my own thing, my own life stuff I've been blessed with, like from Dr. Christy Bonds and and some of the uh, Dr. Stewart and some of the other people that I've been blessed to be able to study with. And uh, re the reason why I'm so passionate about this, it's real simple. It's when you lose your health, mm. I'm going to tell you, you have nothing. That's true. And I, I say this to my clients all the time, how much is your health worth? worth? Yeah. And what would you do if you could get up today and not have to deal with that, what you were dealing with yesterday? What would you do if at 2 o'clock in the morning you could go back to sleep? What would you do if you could get up and your shoulder was killing you and your shoulder quit hurting? Mm -hmm. You know, these are the things that I see, I've done on myself. You know, I've, I've, I've experienced it. And when you experience it, it's a whole different world. Well, I believe you could reverse Parkinson's. One of my closest friends is uh, battling Parkinson's. And, uh, but she's in Florida. She's not here. So I'm looking for, I was, my son's father, Edgar, recommended I call the Adam the Dream Healer because Adam had healed Edgar's pr prostate cancer remote with remote healing. And uh, so I was, you know, in the process of calling Adam Dream Healer. I had spoken to his father in the past. Mm -hmm. But um, what you're doing sounds wonderful. Well, one of my... Um one of my modalities, I like to usually call modalities, techniques you might say, is the Mind's Eye Method. And the first part of it is called the Neuricular, and that was created by Gary Young from Young Living. Oh, I know about okay. Gary Young. Yeah. So, and that was created for people with Parkinson's. So the first time I was in Dallas in 2010, and we were doing the raindrop, and he taught us the new auricular, and I've been, a, I've done a few care classes, and I said, I gotta have this. So I did it, and I come home, and I said, come on, honey, come in here. And I said, let me do, I'm gonna do this before I forget it, you know? And so, so I did the new auricular, and she goes, oh, it feels good, and she goes in the kitchen. She goes, wow, my wrist quit hurting, my <laughs> neck quit hurting, you know, like breathing, you know, I just feel really good. This is what health is all about, wow. education, teaching people what they can do in the modern day to take care of themselves. And in such and a pleasant way with aromatherapy. Mm. And wow. well, it, it smells like, so good. Yeah. Well, it it's, seems like um, I really, it's, it's kind of interesting, Michael, because as we were sharing earlier, after listening to you and, and, and Sheila, thank you for that input because it really, it, it broadened the spectrum of what we're doing. But I think it's really amazing because it, it I don't want to say like a, a mad scientist, but it's like you have all of these different tools. And this is one of the things that I really could feel and sense about you and have total respect because you've taken all of these different tools and modalities 
and it seems like you got this big old bucket, and you just started looking at, you know, working with people and putting all of these different components together to see how you could best serve that person that was in, in front of you. So tell us a little bit more, if you can, just on how all of these how all these different modalities come into play together? Well, let's look at it uh, in a simple way, as um, just said layman. Our body has a hundred trillion cells, and all disease, illnesses, are caused by the emotions which are lodged into the mm. body. So I don't care if it's cancer, I don't care if it's uh, uh, bronchitis, pneumonia, it's, it's an emotion that's in there. So when we go into the body, this is how this lets, you have, to, you have to pull it up by the root. And mm. one of the best ways I've found to pull it up by the root, and that's light. Mm -hmm. Light, again, is the vibration. It helps it, pulls it up. It looks at you, it helps you discard it and throw that little piece away. What did it do? It let you step one foot outside your comfort zone. Okay. Did it feel, did it feel comfortable? Nah, not really. Did you do it? Yeah. Did it feel good? Yeah. Can you do it again? Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is what it is. Baby steps. You can take anywhere and anyone could make all the difference in the world with anything they want to do with baby steps. Well, it's obvious to me your passion. I mean, I can tell you just absolutely love doing what you're doing. Do you mentor others in your field or do you do classes or... How do you plan on passing your knowledge on to, to those that want to learn it? Well, I, I do. I'm, I'm, t I'm teaching quite a bit now. Um, so I do two- and three-day classes. I'll probably be doing some hour classes. And just what I like to do is I like to take education, education, education. Mm. Because it doesn't matter. You, have, you can have the most fabulous thing in the world if you don't know how to use it. And you have to know. So, and when I first started out and I started doing this stuff, I didn't know. And I couldn't get anyone, so I said, that's enough. <laughs> so I would all over the world do it to learn this stuff. And what I found was the, the benefits were just off the charts. It's just, it's the state of the art. It's just, I don't know how to describe it, except, you know, like I said, when you, when you experience something that you're, you know, you're like your knees torn out or something and you put a deep relief on it or you put the oil, mm. like my wife has hip problems, so I work with the tuning forks. And, uh, with the vibration and I go to each part and I get the chi moving, which gets that blockage in the body, which again boils back down to light. And again, light is in everything, vibration. Wow. I sure wish Robin Williams had met you. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, he was, he's lo beloved in the world. Yes, and he is. He, the tools are so much fun. I mean, it sounds like laughter. And I, I have been studying that the more we can be childlike, and of course, he was so childlike on the outside Side. looking in. But had he met you and, and been able to get the tools and had the joy of the transformation that you can experience through natural healing and well, that's one of the positive things, choices for your lifestyle. That's one of the things, Sheila, I think, as and what you want to do with your foundation. Because one of the things that I think is really important in terms of building a real community where you can connect heart to heart. Because even though all the trappings were on the outside for Robin Williams and many people like him, but you know, all the trappings were there. But nobody really knew, I don't think, what was going on inside. There wasn't that ability, that community that could really maybe truly support that person and see and go a little deeper, right? And, and that's why I'm a big component, big component of really heartfelt communities. We spent so much time and we've been so conditioned in this world to, oh, I gotta get mine and I gotta do this and I gotta do it and it's not enough and eh, eh, eh. But when you really get down to it, like who's there to really support you, help you be a part of your personal journey? So it seems like that part of your mission with educating people is really more about, is it, is it more about a heartfelt community connection with people to support each other? How do you envision this whole process coming together? Well, um, I, you know, I had a p pilot television show I was working on called Fascinating People, and I interviewed the man in Florida who won the tobacco litigation for the state of Florida, Mr. Bob Montgomery. And he had just given several million dollars to the Armory Arts in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I, I just said to him, I said, have you ever heard of Dr. Joel Elkies? And I told him the story about how 
art therapy is profoundly more successful than drug therapy. And uh, Joel had also been a pioneer in the, um, um, was it the lobotomy I think they were doing way back in England and here? Mm -hmm. He was, and he, and he told me personally, he said, that doesn't work. Art therapy works. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, it's about, it is about lifestyle and, and, and having the opportunity to, for, for example, in our society, most people are told and they hear on the television, on the, at least the networks, that it's good to have a glass of wine every day or, you know, go have a drink to calm yourself down. Mm -hmm. That is the last thing <laughs> that people in my circle would do. They would go do some aromatherapy or <laughs> transcendental meditation, meditation right. or Qigong. Right. Oh, my right. goodness. Qi I've been studying with <laughs> Bodhi that's at the Hippocrates Health Institute. He's a Qigong master. <gasps> it's so exciting to raise your consciousness and, yeah. and let go of all those things that don't work. Well, I'm going to ask both of you, and either one of you can answer, right, is that you know this, and that's really good. I really think that's a really cool thing. So how do we go about uh, really allowing other people to experience this or know of what you know? Because a lot of times, let me give you a perfect example, okay? I, I didn't realize, right, until I, I can't even remember the, the HBO documentary that they had. It was a five-part series on food. Um, and, but it was, it was, it, it, it was mind-blowing to me because I had never researched and really understood GMOs or, you know, I thought when I saw the, the cereal box and it said, you know, healthy and protein and stuff that it was good. So I'd, I'd get it and take it because I didn't have the education, right? So what's going to be the best way to really, because what you're expressing, I get, but m I just think that we're still in a state where many people don't know yet what's available so how do we how do we get this information out how do we let the world know that michael exists and and this is part of or and not just you that there's other people like you that exist and the things that you're doing with work we know we're going to get some things out with you well, we're doing a film doing. series you know okay. bobby and i were talking about a film series um a wonderful film that john excuse me john robbins did called diet for a new america mm -hmm. I wish he hadn't named it Diet for a New America because a lot of people say, diet, I don't want to watch it. But the truth is it shows the science of why adrenaline goes through an animal's body before it dies and causes illness in humans. And it's black and white for me. I mean, it's just brilliant. And if you look at what President Clinton has done, he went from being very toxic and weak and sick, and now he's become a vegan, and he's totally reversed his health situation. And then, I, you know, if you go online and Google all the great famous vegans in the world, you'll learn that you'll be amazed. You'll just be amazed. I know um, the healthiest people in the world and the most conscious people don't eat animals. <laughs> and it, make, it just makes sense, you know. And then there's another wonderful documentary I, sh I shared with Bobby. You might talk about it. It's called Healing Cancer from the Inside Out by Mike Anderson. Again, the title says Healing Cancer, but I believe it would heal anything if you study and you learn the history of the AMA and how our health, the history of our health care became profitable. I think it should be <laughs> not profitable. I, but I, and again, I'm on a mission through my found, our foundation to educate as many people as possible about the natural ways without the negative side effects. I'm, I'm reaching the, I'm like the oldest woman in the history of my family on both sides, my mother and, mother's side and my father's side. To reach the age I have, no illnesses, no surgeries, no heart conditions, no female or organs out, no kidneys <laughs> taken out. No, I'm, you're laughing, but no, it, I, I went to a wedding recently, right. and, and some of the people in my family, they're much younger than me, have had all these things happen to them. They all eat meat. And I stopped eating meat in 1975. I became a vegan because I reversed my health situation. I was told I was going to be disabled the rest of my life and uh, became a vegan and did a detox. And within eight days, I was pain-free and went back to the neurosurgeon and said, I don't need that surgery, that <laughs> $150,000 surgery you said I need. And he says, oh, you'll be back. Well, not long, I, lo not long after that, I was teaching advanced yoga and fitness and nutrition and feeling younger than I did when I was five years old. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Michael, what about you? What do you think? Education, we have to get out and teach it and show it to the world because the, they have never seen this, so they need to really experience it. Um, I'm starting to teach 
quite a few classes, like two-day workshops. Okay. People, how to use the lights. That's I have a workshop coming up September 12th and 13th from okay. Hilton. And uh, that's just going to be for color harmonics, specializing with the lights and using a little bit of the tuning forks, a little bit of the oils. Just well, how, just would I, how, how can I get that information? Is it on your website? Can you give us your website information sure. so I know where to go get it? Yeah, it's Mind's Eye Home. Just Mind's Eye Home. Just home. like you see your Mind's Eye, but it has home. Okay. Okay, at dot .com or Michael Thrower. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L-T-H-R-O-W-E-R.com. Either one. Okay. And uh, it's a two-day workshop on color harmonics. And it uh, should be a nice little class. I'm going to be bringing some um, simple ways to work with these lights and how you can use those as, on your personal basis, right? your family, or if you want to do it as well, a professional. I'm a big component of, so tell me, what are going to be some of the benefits? Because I think... You know, after being around you, that anybody coming to that seminar is going to have some. But what would be some of the benefits that the people who are there will experience by spending that time with you? Well, the, the benefits are the, just the absolute health benefits, the, what you can do with the lights. With, with it's, um, you know, how to use them. Say, there's four, there's four things that I really am adamant about, basically. And that's the color light facial, which I told you about, anger and bitterness and stress. Mm. What is the number one killer in the whole world? It doesn't matter what illness you have. You know what that is? Stress. 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 Mm -hmm. So when we address stress, you have the tools that you can work with something to de-stress yourself. Guess what you've just done? Put more oxygen into the blood flow, create a total overall health pack. It allows you to eat better, to think better, to, to be better. And just like laughter, the what best. we're talking about, laughter, yes. happiness. How can you do this if you don't feel good? It's, so these are the benefits of learning about to use the lights. It's, it's what you can create in your own atmosphere. Okay. okay. Well, one of the things that I, I think is really pretty amazing that I learned over <clears throat> the last probably 30 years mm -hmm. was how in deep-seated, sometimes you don't even know resentments mm -hmm. because we've been so – let me put the focus back on me. I've been so conditioned – early on through my own life and, and through no fault of anybody else. So I'm not saying that there's, there's any blame. Like I shared the story last week, you know, the first car that I bought was a Ford, right? And I didn't get a car until I was 30 years old because I lived in New York. So you didn't need, really didn't need a car. I had a license, but you need a car. So the first car I bought was a Ford. Well, why did I buy a Ford? Well, the only reason I bought a Ford was because if you showed up at my grandparents' house with anything other than a Ford, they wouldn't let you in. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was like, it was, yeah. it was, you, you don't, don't come with no Chevy, man. It's like, it's, <laughs> it's over, Jack. It's like, it's war. You come with a Chevy, it's like, man, it, it. And so the first car I bought was a Ford. I didn't even like the car. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, I didn't even like it. So that type of conditioning, you know, you start to believe that these things are you, but they're not really you. And I think so, so, so some of the processes I had to learn, was what did I value? What, what did I really think outside of what somebody else, you know, told me to think or how I was conditioned to think? And so resentments play this major role. And, and I found that until you can get off of, for me, I speak for myself, until you can get off of blaming someone or trying to make somebody else wrong, or trying to say, you know, this is what everyone should or should not do, that if it seems like if you open up this space, which you're healing and what you are talking about as well, if you open up the space for love and educate, won't that do what you're asking to see happen to, to other folks instead of making anybody else right, wrong, good, bad, do this, do that? Absolutely. And then again, it's, it's education, education. And anger and bitterness is another one of the protocols yeah. that I just absolutely love because it doesn't matter what you do, if you still have that hatchet buried in there, mm -hmm. you still have that emotion tied into the tissues of the body and you can't break it loose. So you have to learn how. And there, there is a certain protocol that we actually go in there and create try to release that mm. I give you the tool give you the tools that's what's beautiful about using the aromatherapy the forks it gives you the tools to allow this to happen okay I, I, I was work with Sandra Ray with the breath work 
The rebirthing is powerful through the breath to let go of past pain and trauma. Yeah. Transcend it. Yeah. But, you know, I do believe we learn from pain. You know, um, Carol Burnett, when her child died, she said that it never goes away, the grief and the loss, mm. and you miss them very much, like I am doing, experiencing with Adam. Um, but you learn more and more coping skills. So from A to Z, from whether it's... Um, writing i write and i get it out of my body it's you know i mm. i experience it but i also write letters to adam there's incredible books mm. that can help people that are experiencing grief or depression um about how to deal with it he they are th we are their heaven is a wonderful book to wow. read okay it gives you some wonderful tools and breath work is so fabulous i did want to say that adam was a filmmaker mm. and he saw life wow. is beautiful and it changed his life and I came, he was just really young, but he came out of that movie after seeing Life is Beautiful. And he said, I want to make movies like that. <laughs> okay. And so uh, I'm also continuing the me his m mission with making movies. And, but the foundation is my main priority right now, is to, to tell the truth and to, get, to empower the world as yes. in the best way possible. Absolutely. I wanted to ask uh, Michael, you were, you were talking about uh, anger and those feelings mm -hmm. that you hang on to. Uh, a, a very learned man once uh, talked to me a little bit about resentment, and he said, resentment comes from the Greek, which means to feel again. And that kind of, <clears throat> when you were talking, it reminded me that these these feelings, unless they're dealt with and released, they do cling, they do hang on. And I agree with you 100% about the power of education. When you learn all the different outlets and the way to release these things it's very empowering you're no longer in fear of sickness or unbalance or anything like that once you learn the different options it's very freeing isn't it it's extremely freeing um look at it this way the way we look at fear we look at fear like it's 90 percent substance mm. and 10 percent imagination so when we go into the body and we start looking at these and releasing these and we get out of our own way, we start looking at it and we say that fear is actually 10% substance wow. and 90% imagination. And we go, this is what's been holding us up. This is what's been holding us back. This is what's making me sick. It's our perspective. We have to, we have to change our perspective. And the, these are the tools that we have and the education, and it's the whole package. And I agree with the breath work. I love breath work, too. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you know who Anthony Robbins is, you know, he yes. wrote that wonderful book, Unlimited Power. And basically, they ref you learn how to reframe everything that comes your way to empower you. So you, it, anger and pain and trauma becomes a tool to remind you. Uh, there's a wonderful quote. It's, um, life is filled with problems. Oh, life is filled with opportunity cleverly disguised as problems. So I would say <laughs> cleverly disguised as pain, as trauma, you know, grief. I am, d I've definitely been having a challenging time dealing with grief, but I, I um, thank you. I'm glad you learned about yeah. the breath work. The other thing I, I studied was uh, rolfing. Has anyone here been rolfed? Mm -hmm. Yes. You have? Very oh, painful. wonderful. Yes. When they rolf my, <laughs> when they rolf my mouth, <laughs> all these like, tears just flowed out and it, what, like, it wasn't like I was crying because I was sad. It was the memory of my uncle when I was a little girl being bullied, not, not, not negatively bullied, but teased by mm -hmm. my uncle. Mm -hmm. And it was just amazing because the pictures just went as he was rolfing my, my mouth. It was well, amazing. I, and then I looked about 20 years younger <laughs> when it finished because I had been holding on to stress in the cells. Well, I think that's really what it comes down to as we get ready to wrap up here. But it really comes down to something you said earlier Michael, which I think is incredibly important, which I don't, I, I definitely don't want to do this. This is not coming from a negative perspective at all, but just from my own personal experience that if healing isn't at a cellular level, that it just comes back to revisit you, you know, and <clears throat> so many times you can have some relief from something, but then another event will happen right that reminds you of that and if it's not healed cellularly it, it, it brings it back up and i am a big fan of like anthony robbins I've, i i can't even tell you the thousands of the, the amount but here's one thing that i also learned though it's like so much is so much in your environment 
and what you really, who you surround yourself with is so critically important. Absolutely. Because I did the fire walk, and I'm telling you, when I got done with that fire walk, I mean, for the next <laughs> six months, I was unstoppable. I mean, I, I mean, things that I thought I could never do, I did. You know, however, right, without being surrounded with the right support and the right people, it, you easily, without even knowing it, can fall back into old habits and old beliefs. So as we wrap up, Michael, tell us, just, just give us, if you can, some, some real hints. Like you were talking about the event when you were doing the Ralphing. I, I went through several, several different aspects of healers because I had an event happen to me when I was about seven years old. And my aunt was, you know, I was living with my aunt because my mother couldn't take care of me. A variety of different things were going on. And I'll never forget, as she was opening the door for me to leave, she told me she loved me. Well, that connected to me, well, why are you putting me out if you love me? So if somebody said to me that they love me, I'm like, yeah, you lying piece of <laughs> you know? Wow. <laughs> it's oh, like, wow. so, so I went through a variety of different healings, but still, you know, that still would, I could still see and feel that happening. So what, what would you, how do we get to the cellular level as we want to move through these things so they're permanently gone? Well, everything I work with works on the cellular level. And that's one thing mm. I love about the oil. See, the oils penetrate the blood-brain barrier up here and go to the limbic part of the brain. What is that? That is where all the emotions are cataloged. So something as simple as using a, an oil, a certain type of oil, will help bring up that emotion and help let that go. Mm. So, and it's, there's like different protocols I can, I can recommend for just before you walk out the door from... Uh, sacred mountain or valor, just a uh, valor. That's a beautiful oil. That's the Roman soldiers before they went into battle used to use the valor part mm, okay. before they went into battle. Why? It gives them emotional courage. So what wow. do we need to do when we need to, uh, to go after our daily activities? The things that are holding us back and mm -hmm. are causing us this pain and anguish, right? We have to have courage to look it in the eye and let it go. Or look it in the eye and know that you're better than that and know it's not as big as it looks. And you change that. So oil, there's just so many different. Okay. Well, nutrition, mm. I could go volumes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, by by right. the way, uh, Randy, um, Bobby had asked me about how to get in touch with me with the Adam Mitchell Foundation. Yes. We're putting a website together. But um, right now I'm on Twitter, Heal the World. And oh. it's Sheila at Pick Cement. <laughs> that came about because my neighbor, every time she would go by, I have a garden full of all kinds of mint. I'd say, Pick Cement. So she <laughs> went for my birthday. <laughs> she started Pick Cement. So then the other one was, I was going to put another Twitter up. It's about Save the Seeds. It's so important for everyone to save s organic seeds and share them. Okay. Vitally, urgently important for everyone to do that. And join our mission to recall Roundup. Sorry, I'm an advocate. <laughs> okay. I really am. And also, I'd love people to support Ed Asner. He's been a great friend of mine. He has um, Autism Speaks. He has two members of his family with autism. Ed's like the best friend anyone could ever have. And he's let me interview him for fascinating people twice. And so uh, you can reach me also when we get fascinatingpeople.com back up. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. And thank you for sharing. Bobby, any last uh, thoughts that you want to well, share I just before wanna we thank, uh, I just want to thank the Zenas family for sponsoring this hour. Yes. And um, I know Michael's been um, new to the Zenas family. I've known him for a long time, but he's just taken on uh, some of the Zenas products. I know you're working with them really new, but do you have a sense yet on any of the vibration of the... Well, the vibration of the products are, are nice. You know, I'm, I'm using all of them, and I... I I'm still only about a week into them, so right. it's hard to tell with a nutritional product. I mean, you don't really mm -hmm. have that knock out of the park. It takes 30 days to, yeah. to really do this, yeah. but I can see a difference. Yeah, good. Yeah. Because I, I hadn't been familiar with the, the whole terminology of vibration, and when we were in the naturopathic show last year, um, I kept seeing these people come over to our booth, pick up a product, and just kind of close their eyes and they, wow, that's strong. And I go, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and picking up the vibration that this detox is really strong and uh, the power is just so strong. So 
the, it's it's nice. It's like we're philosophically in tune with one another, with what Zenus is doing, what you're doing. Your foundation is right in line with, with my own Your hope fellowship. foundation, yep, right? Yep, so it's just great. And as people come in, it's just nice to see this. It's, it's yes. like a ripple effect. Well, you know? it, it really is. And I want to thank everybody for... Uh, coming, tuning in, because as we really create, this is in the beginning of the creation process of the Zenus Health Center, and it's open to anybody and everybody to come by and just pay us a visit, see what we have to offer, great products, great people, great solutions, as you can tell from all of the things that we've done. So I'd like to thank everyone for being with us this wonderful evening, and good night. Good night. Mother Nature has the answer to all the things we need. It is in the purest waters which flow out to the sea. You will find 